Why, hello there, my little ponies. It's so sorry to interrupt your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> but you see, a little birdie told me that Pinkie Pie was making up funny little stories. Imagine that. She called them funny, and I wasn't even included. Clearly, we all know who the real comedic genius is around here. Now, let's see here. Pinky Tails, Salamadama Ding Dong. What is this? I. It's a pony parody of Aladdin? Discord, what in the hay are you doing here? Aladdin, you say? Yet you didn't invite me to rip off Disney? Aladdin was a fairy tale long before Disney got a hold of it. Besides, I leave the casting choices up to Pinky. I have no say in who plays the genie. Genie? Who said anything about the genie? But you just... I think I'm more cut out for Princess Jasmine, don't you think? A whole new world! <sighs> Tell you what, little bird pony. Bird pony? I, being the gracious lord of chaos that I am, am going to give you a little lesson in comedy. Oop! Hey! My bad. <laughs> ah, there. Goldie. Wait, what? You can't change the story! Um, hello, Lord of Chaos. I thought that was pretty self explanatory. Maybe somebody needs to watch the show that she's parodying. After all, you do tend to get the ponies mixed up. Look, Discord. I haven't prepared for Goldie whatever this is. I haven't written it. I haven't casted it. I haven't even found a narrator! <laughs> That's where you come in, my dear. Me? Me? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I, I write them. I don't read them. <laughs> Too late. It's official. See? But I thought Scribbler was going to narrate this time. <clears throat> Red? My magpie pony. No, that's not what I- Oh, what? Would you prefer some pony else? <clears throat> Discord Tales. F*** is get money. Hey! Discord Tales, toast my goats! All right, all right, I'll do it. But wait, what did you do with Pinky? Now, now, off you go. <laughs> I need a moment to prepare myself for my starring role. Lights! Camera! Mariachi Band! Are you ready for a widow bedtime story to send your widow sweepy heads off to Betty Pie? Pinky! Oh, not to worry. She's a little tied up at the moment. <laughs> so good old Unky Discord is filling in. I assure you, you won't be disappointed. <clears throat> Once upon a time. In a kingdom of pastel girl toy ripoffs, there were three reigning princesses. The eldest was called Celestia, and she was in charge of cleaning all of the kingdom's toilets until they shined like Discord. <laughs> Celestia, the eldest princess, was not in charge of anything to do with toilets. She was charged with bathing her kingdom in sunlight. To do so, she beckoned to what she called the Great Sphere of Light every morning and basked in its brilliance. Sometimes a little too much. Oh, Great One! Once again you have graced us lowly subjects with your sweltering heat and light! The second princess was called Gluma, and she was far more aloof and estranged than her sister. She was charged with controlling Celestia's unhealthy obsession with the sun by putting it to rest every night. However, containing her sister's obsession was rather taxing on Gluma, and she only found solace in darkness. Constantly lurking in the shadows, Gluma spent her days moping around the castle and writing poems about the inevitability of death. Gluma! Come, join me in our traditional offering of obedience to the Great Sphere. The only obedience I give is to the ever-looming cycle that is life. 
One day we'll all become as ash and earth, and all we'll forget of our mark and its histories. Celestia was unfazed by her sister's words. She stared unblinking at the sun and didn't react when they started smoking and shriveling at the sight. Shippence, help me get Celestia away from the window before she goes blind. Again. <sighs> Ah, oh, but Gluma, her adoration of the sun is just so adorable. I ship it. The third and youngest princess, Shippence, was the princess of the ponies, charged with keeping the peace and ruling with both sternness and compassion. However, Shippence had a tendency to take her duties a little too far, imposing her ideal relationships on her subjects regardless of their input and compatibility. Stop forcing that guard to make goo goo eyes at the maid and come help me. Oh, but they're so perfect together. She sneezed and blushed fiercely in embarrassment. But like a gallant hero, this noble stallion uttered, "Bless you." Their eyes met and they shared an unspoken moment of bliss. You said the same thing about the chef and the cooking pot this morning. Um, Gluma, cooking pots don't have eyes. I just thought that with all the time he spends with it, it only makes sense to enchant the cooking pot to love him back. Oh, glorious sphere! Even as you take my vision away, I must bask in your brilliance. Oh, how it burns! <sighs> I miss Pinky. One particularly boring afternoon, the three princesses sat down to enjoy their meal. They were presented with all manner of wonderful things to eat, including a wide array of fruits, salads, and desserts alike. The final dish placed on the table before them was a delectable serving of porridge. Each princess took a bite and then spat it out in disgust. <laughs> what horrors have my taste buds been subjected to? This porridge is not worthy of the royal tongue. Oh, great sphere of light, send down your justice upon those who dare subject my royal tongue to this slop. Celestia levitated the bowl to the window sill and continued her plea. Some lowly fool has dared to present porridge so cold that it has failed to burn the royal tongue. How many times are you going to say royal tongue? Shower your heat upon this gruel until it radiates with blistering heat and burns as brightly as your light. You're mad that the porridge didn't burn you. What is a burn but more proof that we are blessed by the sun's influence of heat? Fire is merely the gift given to us mortals as the form of the great sphere we can control. Fire consumes all in its path. It cannot be controlled as it is as element as death. Fire is a means to produce not heat and light, but ash that then the earth will claim as its own. We are fools to tempt death. It is all encompassing. Fire and death? I ship it. Shippence called from across the room. That's it! Until this porridge is worthy of our royal taste buds! Do you even have taste buds anymore? I figured you'd burn them all off by now. We will take a walk, for the great sphere needs time to bless this meal. A walk? Oh, a walk sounds so lovely. It'll give me a chance to check on the animal traps I laid in the garden this morning. So far, I've caught three male birds, a female bunny, and a rock. Hopefully now, I have caught their everlasting true loves, and can make it so. Why must life curse me to endure this? Gluma asked, following after her sisters begrudgingly. While the princesses were away on their walk, a mischievous little draconiquist happened upon their castle. tra la la innocents, puppies, flowers, and rainbows. Is... is that Twilight's mane? Now, now, my little birdie. Narrators aren't supposed to make comments on the story. Even you should know that. Besides, I doubt she'll miss it. Whoa, what happened to you?
Oh, no, of course not, Goldilocks. A purple and pink mane is so appropriate. Oh, I have plenty of Goldilocks and gold keys as well. This one opens my storage unit. This one unlocks the talent and the fandom. I'll just hang on to that one. Oh, and this one unlocks the cage that you keep Pegasus Pitch in. Cage? What cage? He, he can leave any time he wants. Give me that. Oh, me, oh my! What is this? Such an enormous and stereotypically girly castle! Ooh, with adorably delightful matching guards, each sold separately. Halt! No pony shall enter the princess's castle without express invitation! Well, I'm not exactly any pony, am I? I said halt! Now oh, do make up your mind, please. We haven't got all day. I'm not above recasting you, you know. Perhaps you would be better suited as the royal toilet polisher. After all, somebody really must do it, since Celestia feels like she's too good for all that. Or perhaps something a little less chatty, like a flower or a tuba. Oopsie, wrong story. A pig, perhaps. What in tarnation? Oh, have an apple, why don't you? Ready for a luau! That joke's not in bad taste, is it? <laughs> I believe I got a little off track. What story is this again? J just go, please. No more shtick! The guard whimpered, pulling his spear away from the door and allowing Goldie Chaos passage. When Goldie Chaos made his I am a her, thank you very much. If you could make Rainbow Dash into a prince and Spike into a drag queen, it shouldn't be too difficult to change my gender as well. You're the one who made all of the princess's voices male. Don't think I didn't notice that. <sighs> when Goldie Chaos made her way to the dining room, she discovered that she was famished from her journey and desired something to eat. The servants had cleared the table of the remaining food from the royal lunch, with the exception of the three bowls of porridge. Goldie Chaos examined the first bowl of porridge carefully. She seemed unfazed by the fact that it appeared to be on fire, taking a spoonful and swallowing it in one gulp. Oh my, this porridge is too hot! I can barely stand it, never mind that I'm poor dragon! Nevertheless, I shan't eat another drop! Goldie Chaos tossed the first bowl of porridge back onto the table and approached the next one. Alright, let's see here. Oh my, is this... this bowl is shaped like a skull! That's more like it. I find this positively delightful. Perhaps this forage will better suit my tastes. Goldie Chaos took a gulp from the oddly shaped bowl and spat it out again. <sighs> This porridge is as cold as death, and I have the sudden urge to write a poem. Ah, the scars of lies run deep in my soul like a river of sorrow. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Goldie Chaos set the bowl back down on the table and moved on to the third and final bowl. She seemed a little hesitant to try it due to the fact that it was heart-shaped and bubbling with little pink heart bubbles. Oh, this looks promising. I've heard about this... this heart thing. You know, Fluttershy insists that I have one of these, but as I have clearly demonstrated, I keep old copies of magazines and ceramic mugs stored in my chests. Oh, oh, oh I have a stunning little centerfold of Celestia that I... Ahem. Oh, right. This is a children's program. I'll just... Save that for the internet later. Now, about this bowl. I won't get any diseases by touching it, will I? Diseases? What diseases? Compassion, understanding, caring, or even the dreaded cooties. Yuck. No, Goldie Chaos. You won't catch caring. I promise. Well, all righty then, if you say so. Goldie Chaos dipped her tiny spoon into the porridge and took a bite. Once she did, her eyes lit up and she smiled. Mmm, this porridge is just right! Goldie Chaos said, putting the porridge, bowl and all, in her mouth. Oh, 
Wait a minute. I think... I think I'm forgetting something here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, port is too hot, too cold, yada yada. Ah, yes! I forgot! I cannot eat this porridge until I have found the proper chair to sit in. Goldie Chaos got up from the chair she was currently sitting in and examined the other chairs in the room. On the far end of the table, there was a chair made of metal and lined with metal coils, with scorch marks indicating that they had been heated on a frequent basis, and all in the shape of a sun. Ooh, talk about the hot seat. This must be... Hey, Celestia's dining chair! Final answer! Goldie Chaos sat in the chair for a moment and then scowled. Hmm, maybe it doesn't work until you plug it in? Goldie Chaos reached behind the chair and plugged the extension into the wall. The metal coils turned red and began heating up while Goldie Chaos adjusted herself, trying to get comfortable. Moments later, she sniffed the air curiously. Mmm, <laughs> smells like they're cooking up something delicious for dinner. Oh, no, wait, that's me. <laughs> I guess that means only hot mares can sit in the hot seat. Bird pony, be a deer and play a rim shot for me. I seem to be otherwise occupied. Once Goldie Chaos had freed herself from the ceiling, she found another chair to try. This one was all black and had wooden spikes sticking out of the arms, legs, and back. There was a small cushion on the seat of the chair, and Goldie Chaos settled right in. Ow! I think I've sat on something sharp! Goldie Chaos shifted in her seat, searching around under the cushion with her tail before pulling out a tiny green pea. Uh, I am a real princess after all. Unsatisfied with this chair, Goldie Chaos found the only remaining chair in the room, the one right in front of the perfect porridge. Hmm. It's a bit... Snug. Not exactly my choice for color. <laughs> ah, yes! This is perfect! And now at last for my scrumptious meal. Goldie Chaos poured the porridge into her mouth and flung the glass bowl into the wall, shattering it upon impact. Soon after, however, she spat it out again. Oh no, no, no! Now it's too cold! It's all ruined! Time for bed! Moments later, Goldie Chaos appeared in a room with three beds, each uniquely designed for its princess. Hmm. The first and second objects I try are never satisfactory, and the third one always is. Well, no pattern there! On to the first bed! She approached the first bed, which was painted gold with symbols of the sun. When she touched the mattress with the tip of her claw, the bed suddenly sprang to life. It clasped her arms and legs down to the bed, and a pair of headphones appeared on her head, where a disgruntled Gluma could be heard saying, The sun is not a deity. The sun is a ball of gas millions of miles away. Fire is not a toy. The sun is not a deity. The sun is a ball of gas millions of miles away. Silly ponies and their strange lullabies. Goldie Chaos said, magicking herself out of the bed effortlessly. The moment she did so, the bed changed to look harmless again. Well, that bed was too hard anyway. Let's see what else we have here. The second bed Goldie Chaos approached was shaped like a plain black wooden coffin. She laid down in the soft bedding interior and found that she began to sink into it slowly. As she did so, the coffin lid also began to close over her. Eh, this one is just a bit too soft. Goldie Chaos magicked out of this bed and fixed her mane before spying the third and final bed. It was, not surprisingly, shaped like a large heart with rose petal sheets and rosebud pillows. It was draped in a canopy of fine silk and bathed in artificial pink lighting. Oh, happy day! This is the bed for me! Goldie Chaos cried, face planting into the bed so violently that the entire bed collapsed all around her. Ah, perfect. 
Later that afternoon, the three princesses returned to the dining hall, eager to try their porridge for the second time. Celestia was pleased to see the scorch marks around her bowl and praised the great sphere as she lowered her spoon into the charred remains of her meal. Before she took a bite, however, the spoon clattered back onto the table and she let out a horrified gasp. What in the name of me is this? Some pony has desecrated the royal porridge by sampling it before me! Oh, grave injustice! Who would ever dare defy me, the caretaker of the Great Sphere? Before this day ends, the Great Sphere will bear my vengeance upon those whose tongue this porridge has burned! Celestia stamped her hoof down angrily on the table, sending her bowl flying across the room and onto an unsuspecting guard. Ah! Huh. Looks like some pony's been eating my porridge. Oh, thievery! What desperate, lonely fool would want to disgrace their own mouth with the foulness of your porridge, Gloomer? Shippence! What of your inadequate gruel? Huh? Oh yeah, my porridge was eaten. Bowl destroyed, so sad, etc, etc. So, Gluma, this strapping young stallion over here was just telling me that his favorite color is blue. And, just like you, his favorite time of the day is sunset. You two have so much in common, Shippen said, pushing the embarrassed stallion forward with her magic. No. Oh, come on, how can you say no to this face? Look how adorable. No, Shippence. One kiss? No! How about a nose nozzle? Give it up, Shippence! Some pony has been sitting in my chair! Celestia interrupted, examining what Goldie Chaos had called the hot seat. Gluma, grateful for the subject change, joined her. I smell the ash remains of a flank that is not my own! A poor soul perished from the lure of curiosity. They knew not of the nature to which an immortal can withstand such pains and remain unscathed. But even fire has its redemption, for it burns the flesh to feed the earth so that a new generation can spring forth from- Luma, look! Some pony has sat in your chair- Oh wait, I don't care about that, but my chair! Now that is still an injustice! Remind me again why I have to sit on this instrument of torture for every meal. And I cannot be certain, but I believe something has changed about Shippence's chair as well. Shippence once again seemed unfazed by this anomaly. Instead, she levitated the guard near Gluma, leaned in close to Gluma's ear, and whispered, Touch, touch hips. Enough! I can bear this madness no longer! If you need me, I shall be in my bedchambers, vexing my life's cruelties! Ah, uh, don't worry, Tiger. We'll get her. Shippen said, patting the guard's head sympathetically. <sighs> Much to Gluma's dismay, the other two princesses followed her to their bedchamber. Celestia was still on the prowl for the criminal who had sampled her porridge and desecrated her chair with their flank. Shippence had given up on her OTP, Gluma and the guard, once she had bumped into an unsuspecting female guard in the hallway. She reasoned that those two had far more in common, and it became her new focus. It wasn't more than a few seconds upon entering the room that Celestia cried out, Someone's been detained in my bed! I'm more interested in the fact that they got out of it. This mystery baffles me so, Gluma! What fiend has infiltrated our castle and done us such injustices? Look! Your bed has been defiled as well! How can you remain so calm? <sighs> we haven't considered the possibility that the castle staff may have just been cleaning up. Celestia's right. There is a perpetrator. And she's still asleep here at my bed. Good gracious, Shepherds! What has she done to your lovely sleeping quarters? Eh, I've done worse. Arise, mortal! The Great Sphere will enact its justice at last! <sighs> Five more minutes. Celestia's face turned red with anger. She levitated the intruder off the bed and shouted, Who 
is Discord. I am Goldie. <laughs> Uh, oh. Say it, Discord! Oh, and they all lived, oh, painfully ever after. Uh, what just happened? Now, where were we? Ah, oh, yes. <clears throat> Once 